want to thank everybody very much for coming out here to our reception to recognize some very well-deserving students here locally. Uh, my name is Kevin Graham. For those of you who I haven't had an opportunity to meet yet, I am the scholarship chair for the Tampa Bay Association of Black Journalists. And we are very pleased to have partnered with the St. Petersburg Times this year in awarding uh, $5,000 in scholarships to some to our students. So you guys want to give the St. Petersburg Times a hand. Uh, I also want to thank our scholarship committee, some of who are here with me. We have Camille Spencer in the back. Terry <laughs> Day. Robert Wither. Evans, our president for TBABJ, who will uh, come up now and give a brief introduction, and um, then we'll have some further remarks from Neil Brown, who's the executive editor of the St. Pete Times. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, you've done an outstanding job as scholarship chair number one, so I'm going to give you a in the past, uh, we've had we've had problems getting our scholarship uh, effort going because we needed somebody we could count on to make sure that we got a lot of great applications and that the kids we gave the scholarships to were deserving. And Kevin has just done an amazing job, so I really want to thank him, first of all. Uh, I'm Eric Deggins. I'm the TV and media critic for the St. Petersburg Times, and I'm also the president of the Tampa Bay Association of Black Journalists. So I want to welcome you guys uh, to our temporary home here in this luxury suite. Uh, we're having a good time at the NABJ conference. And for those of you who are uh, not attending, especially you students, you know, we want, uh, next time you hear about NABJ, we want you to think about coming. Uh, anybody can come to the convention and get something out of it, even though the group is focused on black journalists. And so uh, we want you to think strong about that as well. Um, the St. Petersburg Times has been invaluable in helping us. Uh, when we first decided to do something that we call the Grio Drum Awards, about four or five years ago, we did this at the Pointer Institute. And we wanted to have an award ceremony to kind of encourage people to cover people of color well. And we also wanted to try and help young journalists of color who were trying to make their way in the industry. And uh, the St. Petersburg Times stepped up with a sponsorship. And the Pointer Institute, which owns the St. Petersburg Times, let us use their facility for free. And so we, we had four great, wonderful um, uh, occasions there. We raised a lot of money. And it put us in a position to extend the partnership to the point where the St. Petersburg Times has given us $5,000 to give away. So once again, we want to thank you guys. And not just because I work for you. <laughs> so thank you very much. And to that end, we want to bring up the executive editor of the St. Pete Times, Mr. Neil Brown, to give us a few words of wisdom. Inspire us. Well, thank you. And first of all, the good news is that the five grand didn't come out of Eric's pay. <laughs> <laughs> Tight times. You never know. But uh, anyways. Uh, oh, I heard. <laughs> It's a delight to be here and uh, to celebrate um, uh, those who want to continue to be part of our business and want to continue to make the world a better place through journalism and tell good stories uh, and uh, be part of uh, uh, the excitement. And I say excitement because it's, it's sometimes a little tough to muster it these days, you know, with the economic situation we're in. And I, I was uh, throughout the convention today, and I got to tell you, it's a superb vibe at this convention, of which I credit uh, NABJ overall, but also this chapter, which has done so much. Uh, so many of you are working so hard, and I think you all deserve a round of applause for putting out a heck of a <laughs> chapter. Terrific vibe, and I, 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 you know, um, I know attendance is down, but I guarantee you, attendance at this convention is more than attendance at most conventions around the country these days. I'm part of ASME; they had to cancel their convention, you know. So to get, uh, you know, 1,400 some folks or over a thousand folks to come is a great credit to the organization and, and to what we're all about. Um, we're here to celebrate and, and uh, hand out a little dough to uh, the, to some folks who are the future of our business. And I believe that totally. The St. Pete Times believes that totally. Um, I was just saying to Ashley, in fact, um, what's exciting is, is that you know, although, again, you hear lots of stuff about whether there's a future in journalism and all, we've never had more people looking and reading our stuff, whether it's online or in print, than ever before. There is more interest in what we do. There is more power in what we do than ever before. So even in these difficult times, try not to let it get you down. Because it's not about journalism. Journalism will survive forever. And as long as we have 
terrific young folks like Eugenio, Ashley, Raina, and Carmel, who are true believers, we will be fine because those who work in this business are the true believers who are going to make the world a better place. And so we couldn't be more thrilled to uh, be supporting that uh, in, in all kinds of ways. So even when eh, the job market's a little tight, and even when you know you wonder, well, oh, is this really what I want to do? The fact is I can look in your eyes and I know it's what you want to do because you want to tell good stories and you want to help people and you want to make the world a better place. So I commend you. Uh, it's a, not an easy competition to win this money and uh, you should all be very proud. I congratulate your schools that are doing such a great job in, uh, in helping you get there. And uh, we couldn't be more proud of you and more proud of this chapter for what, uh, what you're all doing. Uh, and believe me, the future is in fact very bright. Thank you very much. introduce our scholarship winners and I'll read a, a brief bio first that I just had them all proof for accuracy <laughs> before publication. Got to get it right first. That's the first question. That's the first <laughs> Set a good example. Uh, our first scholarship uh, winner is a rising senior at the University of South Florida. Um, she impressed judges with her ability to tell a story in words and video. Her application included a broadcast piece which she edited, shot, and produced. She showcased her strong writing skills in articles about voting software glitches in Hillsborough County during the 2008 presidential election and a forward-thinking piece about the marriage of tourism and technology in the 21st century. Of this student, a local leader familiar with her community service wrote, her perspective as a Muslim woman brings unique insight promoting forthright communication on topics of concern to young people. She is fluent in Arabic and plans to use her college education in magazine and broadcast journalism to focus on Middle Eastern affairs. This fall, she will serve as a web producer and reporter for Florida Focus, a news break that airs weeknights at 5 p.m. on WUSF TV. Please join me in congratulating Carmel Delshad. Our next winner is a rising senior at the University of South Florida, where she also works on the campus newspaper. She shoots, edits, and produces multimedia projects for the USF Oracle. In her application packet, she showcased her skills as a producer and editor in stories that focus on the 2008 presidential election, street preachers who frequent the USF Tampa campus, and the inauguration of Barack Obama as experienced on campus by USF students. She has also been a reporting intern locally for WTVT, Fox 13, and WUSF Radio. One teacher wrote, for the past five years, she's worked full-time as a customer service representative at a car insurance company to help put herself through college and to help her family. She helps care for two sisters, a nine-year-old and a five-month-old, Five month old this year. <laughs> the teacher went on to say, most of my other students would crumble under such responsibility, but not her. Please join me in congratulating Ashley Brandon. This scholarship recipient is also a rising senior at the University of South Florida, where she worked for the student newspaper, The Oracle, and served as an assistant editor for the arts and entertainment section. In her application, 
She gave a detailed and rare account about the inner workings of a Tampa funeral home and a very interesting article about whether the male to female ratio on college campuses causes male students to take advantage of being outnumbered and spend more time hooking up than settling down. <laughs> <laughs> One teacher wrote that her strongest attributes are her determination, competence, self-confidence, and sense of humor. She liked to write entertainment and lifestyle stories for magazines. Please help me congratulate Raina Boston. Now, our last winner will break the mold a little bit. One thing I forgot to mention was uh, this year we handed out $3,000 scholarship winners and then one scholarship for $2,000. And our next winner uh, is the recipient of the $2,000 scholarship award that we gave out this year. This scholarship winner has a knack for long storytelling, but more importantly, holding the reader's attention. While at Hillsborough High School, his staff was named All Florida by the Florida Scholastic Press Association and second in the country by the National Scholastic Press Association. That same staff also was named a finalist for the Pacemaker Award. He speaks English and Spanish and works as a beat writer who has covered swimming, golf, football recruiting, and gymnastics for the independent Florida Alligator at the University of Florida, where he is a rising junior. His work has also appeared as a correspondent in the Tampa Tribune. E.T., as he's so affectionately known, touched the heart of some judges with his extra special personal life. He had a liver transplant as a baby and proved doctors wrong when they said he wouldn't survive. A former high school teacher wrote, of all the students I've taught, I can honestly say that few make me as proud. Please join me in congratulating Eugenio Torres. And it seems like the more the outside world seems to say that journalism and print newspaper is a dying breed, the more skills that the students who apply for these scholarships bring to the table. And so again, I want to just commend you guys for that. If you ever need anything in the future, please don't hesitate to call on any of the faces that you see here. Um, we'll invite Eric up for some closing remarks and maybe a few announcements, and then everybody can hang out for as long as they like. Feel free to eat, drink, and socialize.